GettingPositiveKarmaNow.com presents Bhagavad Gita for All Lectures by Nalan K. Narula Recorded in front of a live audience Bhajman Radhe Krishna, Krishna, 
ज्ञानम थी मेरे अंदर से ज्ञानम जना श्लाख्या चक्षुर मेरे तम ये न तस्मय श्री गुरु न So last time we had completed texts twenty two through twenty five of chapter fourteen, qualities of the material nature, the three modes of material nature, and in that, Sri Krishna had said to Arjun that one who does not hate. envy or lament the appearance of either illumination or the attachment to activity or the presence of illusion and one who does not desire them when they are there or when they are no longer there one who is firmly situated in a neutral position being unconcerned and not agitated by the action of the three qualities remaining transcendental to these in his consciousness knowing that only these modes of nature are acting and one who being situated in the transcendental self remains illumined and unwavering unflickering and steady in distress and happiness in pleasure and pain who looks at a lump of earth a stone a piece of gold with an equal vision one who is equally disposed towards friend and foe who is equipoised whether defamed praised honored or dishonored who treats friend and enemy alike and who has given up attachment to fruitive activities that person is said to have transcended the material modes of nature <coughs> so the understanding was that while living in the material world uh, being affected by the material modes of nature one has risen above them and that is possible only in the consciousness area and understanding that the material modes of nature are acting and the soul self is not acting at all and then when he does all activities as an offering to the divine as a service to the divine uh, unwavering and steady both in distress and happiness uh, illumination in the mode of goodness and knowledge comes to such a one so we proceed further uh, on 1426th shlok maam chayo avibhyacharena bhakti yogena sevate sa gunan samatiti etan brahma bhuyaya kalpate mam unto me cha also ya such a person avyabicharena one who is without fail without fa- falling down and without uh, deviation is linking to me through bhakti yoga bhakti yogena and renders service to me sa hi गुणान समतीत्य एतान ब्रह्म भूय ये कल्पते सो सच अ वन ट्रांसेंड्स गोज बियॉन्ड एन अबव ऑल दीज मटीरियल क्रिएशन्स सो हैविंग गॉन बियॉन्ड ऑल दीज मटीरियल क्रिएशन्स ही इज एलिवेटेड टू द ब्रह्म भूय या प्लैटफॉर्म कल्पते बिकम्स so he becomes so one who is linked to me in bhakti yoga and unfailingly renders unalloyed and exclusive devotional service to me surmounts and transcends the three material modes of nature and becomes elevated to the brahma consciousness level now one who is linked to me in, in bhakti yoga means that uh any of the vishnu aspects of krishna the vishnu tatva which are absolute and not separated part of him unlike the material modes of nature which are his superior separated spiritual energy so he is talking about service to him which includes the vishnu tatva okay and all the plenary portions the absolute portions of krishna that means the avatars such as ram uh 
Kishkin, uh, Narsingha Dev, any of the avatars, Lord Vishnu, Mahavishnu, any of these are considered to be uh, service to him if one is attached to serving any of these expansions of Krishna. And the key, a uh, couple of key uh, understandings is Bhakti Yogena means to be linked in devotional service consciousness and therefore the linking gives the spiritual qualities to that individual of the same quality as Krishna. So when one is in Brahma Bhuyaye, when is the person, when the person is in that Brahma consciousness, the spiritual substratum, which is Brahma, which is the universal life force. Another word for Brahma is universal life force. Another word for the universal life force is Reiki. So this pervades the entire existence. And from this underlying material existence arise the three gunas, the three qualities of material nature, Satvagun, Rajogun and Tamagun, the mode of goodness, the mode of passion and the mode of ignorance. And these are expansions of the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi Devi, who is dearmost to Krishna, even more dear to him than the living entities, always more dear to him. So the goddess of Lakshmi is, uh, the goddess Lakshmi is known by these three aspects, the spiritual form that she has as the Devi form, not the material Devis, but the spiritual Devis and the spiritual universal life force form of Brahma or Reiki and then the three material modes of nature. So there are three aspects to Lakshmi, the personal form, the universal life force, the mother energy, the Reiki energy and the three material modes of nature. So he has already, Krishna has already said earlier that his separated spiritual energy, superior spiritual <coughs> energy creates the three illusory modes of nature and the immediate source of which is Lakshmi Ji. In uh, the word, if we look at the word Brahma Bhuyaye, it denotes a consciousness similar to that of Krishna. Actually, it denotes a consciousness similar to that of Lakshmi Devi in her service mood to Krishna. So she is the original Brahma and the Prakriti also. If you remember, we had talked about the Pradhan from which the Prakriti arises. And she is glorified in all these three forms, including her original form. And only by the grace of a devotee of the Supreme Lord, one can attain to him. And the grace is coming through Lakshmi Devi, through Radha Rani, who is the dearmost uh, part of Krishna, from whom all the Devi forms arise. And they are always trying to uh, push the living entity towards Krishna. But at the same time, we mustn't forget that the three material modes are also created by them. These are obstacles also created for us by Lakshmi Devi. Because the three material modes of nature are illusory. We are under illusion that we are this body and that we need to do these various things. According to the modes which are predominant from time to time, they are always battling each other for supremacy. Uh, the mode of goodness is battling ignorance and passion. Sometimes passion is winning, sometimes goodness is winning, sometimes uh, ignorance is winning and they all have different qualities as we have studied in this chapter. So, in order to cross over the obstacles, samatitya, samatitya means these are the Going beyond, going beyond what? The three material modes of nature, which are the obstacles in our consciousness, in our uh, appreciation and understanding of the true spiritual nature. One has to come to the Brahma platform and therefore internally one has to be in that platform even while uh, being in the clutches of material nature. So there are two very uh, clear distinctions here. One is that one is uh, uh, influenced by 
material nature influenced by karma also and internally one is clear and internally when one is clear about what is the reality what is the truth and one is attached in consciousness in krishna consciousness then one gets by that association the qualities of krishna himself which is transcendental and divine then we have text 27 which is uh, lord krishna's conclusive statement on this segment of the discussion in answer to arjun's three questions this is the final understanding brahmano hi pratishtham amritasya vyasya cha shashvatasya cha dharmasya sukhasya kantikasya cha so brahmana hi pratishtha aham amritasya avyayasya cha shashvatasya cha dharmasya sukhasya ekantikasya cha brahmana means the impersonal brahma jyoti the universal life force reki he means certainly pratishtha yeah. pratishtha means established and it is interesting that bhakti vedanta swami has given the meaning here the rest so the rest means that he is the source krishna is the source of the impersonal brahma jyoti and also the entire material creation so this is a reminder so it is an interesting uh, understanding obviously bhakti vedanta swami had this understanding and what is that understanding that understanding is very very critical aham amritasya avyayasya cha shashvatasya cha dharmasya sukhasya ekantikasya cha so if we translate this what it means all together the meaning is extremely significant for healers as well as those who are brahmins in the formal tradition and the statement is i am the source of the spiritual universal life force energy known as the impersonal brahma as well as the entire creation the universal life force is imperishable and in eternal and it confers immortality as well as the auspicious constitutional position of unending absolute bliss so what how do we get to this if you look at the shlok it says amritasya avyayasya cha shashvatasya now amritasya is immortality amrit means that which gives deathlessness and shashvatasya means eternal so if we translate both as eternal and eternal it doesn't make sense what makes sense is that krishna gives immortality which means liberation from material bindings and that is coming through the universal life force brahma energy which is reiki so this is absolutely unequivocal there is no doubt that the reiki energy the universal life force the brahma energy is a liberating energy sanctioned by krishna where krishna says that i endow this energy with this power because only krishna can uh, liberate anyone so this energy directly coming from krishna has this quality of amritasya of deathlessness which is different from what we experience when we are in the material universe we are born we age we suffer diseases and we die to be born again so he says then dharmasya cha dharmasya i put you in your the energy puts you in your constitutional position dharma means what is your essential unchangeable unchanging nature now the nature of thing like a fire is uh, to it has the quality of heat and it has the quality <coughs> of light so that is the dharma so that is the essential nature if you take that quality away then the essential nature changes 
so this is something that is your basic fundamental truth of who you are so this truth of who you are the essence of who you are is sukhasya ekantikasya cha sukhasya means bliss and ekantikasya means ultimate so this is unending absolute bliss so earlier we had discussed what is sukh because previously there was a discussion about sukh and dukh so sukh is actually composed of su means uh, good things or happiness and kha is suffering so when we talk about sukhasya ekantikasya that means which is without it is the absolute highest level there is no tinge of dukh in that so this is as far as the position of uh, the individual is who comes to this point so these are all properties of the brahma energy that a brahmin or a reiki healer is connected to and this is the basic position of somebody who is a spiritualist the difficulty is that if one remains only in the brahma conception of the impersonal brahma jyoti it is very easy to fall out of that consciousness because it is difficult to connect with an impersonal thing so there has to be a personalized form so it is said that there are three stages of realization there is brahma then there is parmatma and then finally there is bhagavan so we have reached so far the understanding of what is the brahma stage so it is 14 chapters out of 18 that have brought us to the point of brahma realization or reiki realization and this is only the beginning and we have seen from our experience that those healers who do not have a higher understanding of uh, beyond brahma going to parmatma and bhagwan they fall out of the process so this is absolute confirmation of the statements of the scriptures that actually one needs to go beyond the impersonal brahma beyond the impersonal universal life force energy going back to the source that is bhagwan ultimately then unless that understanding is there and one is not linked in krishna consciousness to krishna it is very easy to deviate from this path so while krishna is saying that this is a uh, the impersonal energy but he is talking about linking to him me the personal form so that is the highest so while the energy is there it is doing all these things and you are working with this energy you must know what is the source and what is your ultimate goal so this is what krishna is leaving us with at the end of chapter 14 the three material modes of nature and how one goes beyond it and that is the final understanding that we are left with at this point in time before proceeding to the next level which is talking about the yoga of the supreme person chapter 15 so we will end our talk here and if there are any questions about chapter 14 especially these last two shlokas or rather from 22 to 27 <coughs> uh, i will take some questions now anyone has a question here there is a question the name yeah, the question. yeah so that Shri means Shri. yes Why does Lakshmi Ji create obstacles through material modes of nature? Is money an obstacle to spiritual progress? Those who do not have money for basic necessities, do they ever spiritually progress? Okay, the uh, obstacles are created by our own desire to enjoy the illusion that we are controllers or supreme or godlike, or at the same platform as God. So that facility has been organized through the illusory. energy of maya devi that is the first and as far as money being an obstacle it can be or it can be a great help because if you have the money then you do not have to struggle so hard for your material necessities and therefore there is an opportunity for you to progress in your spiritual life without worrying too much about your material requirements and if your material requirements are minimized basically you are having more than what you spent 
you are saving something and you are living a reasonably comfortable life there may be hardships in so many ways but if your basic fundamentals are taken care of that you have enough a place to stay you have uh, enough money to eat and live your life in a reasonable fashion uh, then you can avoid the distraction that money brings which is that you splurge you blow it up you keep up with the neighbor you uh, spend more than what you need to spend all for ego <coughs> positions and all for the uh, ahankar aspect so it is definitely double edged it can go in either direction it is entirely up to you where you want to take it so we don't want you to be a material miser nor do we want you to be a spendthrift so the idea is of balance that you are using money in the right way you are giving some of your money in charitable works or pious activities or spiritual activities is even better beyond the pious activities but it can be a terrible distraction so it is very difficult to manage unless you have the proper understanding guidance and the spiritual connection so the spiritual connectivity is very important and finally your third question was that what happens to people who don't have enough for their daily necessities and do they get a chance to be god conscious yes if they don't have daily necessities they may be remembering god more than you and i uh, and they will get a chance it's not that it is not available for somebody who is poor in fact if you look at the people who are very poor they are more aware of at least the demigods and also uh, many of them are aware of who krishna is and they pray to krishna they pray to lakshmi ji uh, they pray to the avatars of krishna uh, which is all fine so they get an aspect uh, where they can connect in a different way to these different incarnations of krishna and expansions of his energy and gradually make their way up to devotional service so when one has done enough pious activities one gets a chance to connect with a spiritualist the spiritualists are of course of three different types as we have discussed often uh, there is the kanishta adhikari there is the madhyam adhikari and there is the uttam mahabhagavat or the uh, parmahans uh, devotee and these qualities are also there in the various spiritual masters so at the beginning stage there is an impersonalistic or a very narrow understanding although the person is pious he has a narrow understanding of uh, the of who is the divine and he seeks maybe a kanishta adhikari where only they are thinking that the deity or the deity form of krishna is all that there is they have no concept of the qualities or the uh, respect worthy qualities of the community of healers so they are not engaging with that and then as their understanding improves they connect to the madhyam adhikari who is knowing the difference between the material and the spiritual he is engaged in propagating krishna consciousness and looking at the duality of nature and trying to balance the spiritual with the material and then elevating beyond that level to the uttam adhikari mahabhagavat is the person who is seeing nothing wrong anywhere in the universe he has no complaints he has no problems he is knowing that everything is going along perfectly so he is not uh, exerting himself for material uh, endeavors so whatever is coming reasonably and naturally without extra effort he is content with that and he is developing himself internally so as it is enjoined that one should associate with such a person because then one is very quickly able to get liberated so the people who are attached to the kanishta guru who is only talking about rules regulations and uh, you know fear based situations uh, they are not progressing very much and those who come out from that they go to the madhyam adhikari level they find a spiritual teacher who is like that and then they can find even the one who is the uttam adhikari now the uttam adhikari sometimes step down one 
to the madhyam level in order to teach. He has to see duality in order to be able to uh, make the connection between the people's lives and the teachings. So he has to come down one level from the supreme uh, uttam adhikari level down to the madhyam adhikari level in order to teach or preach. Internally he may be at the highest level. So this is the difference between the three uh, teachers, the three types of teachers. These are three qualities of devotees also. And bhakti yoga means to be linked through the spiritual master to these. So it is important to have the initiation. So the, you cannot be linked directly perfectly. You can make a start. That is considered pious activity. So you start with the bhakti yoga. You don't uh, formally accept a spiritual master until you come to the point of understanding that you really need to do that. But those who do not accept a spiritual master are not in bhakti yoga actually. They are in uh, doing pious activities. Very good pious activities which gets them a ticket to the diksha as and when they take that diksha. So this is the whole process of bhakti yoga. And rendering service it is stated in the scriptures many places that rendering service to the spiritual master is even better than trying to render direct service to the divine because it is not possible to jump over uh, such a person directly uh, to link with Krishna. The direct linking is uh, not happening actually. So the medium of the master is required. That is the linking aspect or importance of the spiritual master. So any other questions anybody has? Shifra's father thinks sir, how should one approach one's work or job in life? Is it only a source of money or the way of way to expel one's duty? People who don't have to work, how do they expel their duty? <laughs> <coughs> Actually, your statement that one has to work for money only is not, is actually contradicted by you when you say to fulfill your duties, because you are earning the money that is the means for you to fulfill your duties in many directions. So, it is meant for you, gives you the facility. Suppose you are not able to manage your life in terms of what is required for it, that you do not have food, clothing, shelter, these things. These are the basics that you need. And money affords you that and that comes from your work or your job. And those who are fortunate where they don't have to work, then they have a problem because they can either go completely, uh, you know, dissipated uh, or they can dedicate themselves to proceeding in the spiritual path the way that it has been described so uh, having money not having money is uh, uh, gives different results so it is not that i am just doing the job to earn money full stop it is what you can do with that first of all it engages you in an activity which you might be using to serve others or to be of use to others in some form it could be something very humble but activity must is a must there is nobody who can exist without acting even if he sits in the forest and meditates as arjun wanted to do right in the beginning and he was not willing to follow his work of a kshatriya warrior and krishna says and gave all kinds of uh, rationale uh, from various uh, scriptural understandings and Krishna says you are quoting the scriptures and talking like a wise man but you are actually a fool because you have not got the essence of what it means. You cannot artificially go and renounce. There has to be an inner development for you to do that because anything artificially done you will fall out of very quickly. So falling out of that is happening if you are not prepared for it. 
so very often uh, you know people say i want to become a spiritual master i want to become a reiki master they have no qualification they don't realize they have no qualification uh, it is not something one should aspire to be a master that in the sense that you are a controller over others uh, it is something that develops and circumstances will place you in that position so depending on what is your position you will uh, act accordingly and you should understand that money is a part of how the universe works and you require some money everyone needs some money and the question is how much is some money so you may be wanting huge amounts you may be wanting uh, less so you have to decide and it goes back to the point of over endeavoring how much should one endeavor so it's not required that one should have an absolute breathless life just for the sake of making money what are you going to do with it then there are others who say you know i'm earning money to put my children i want them to go to america to study why what's wrong with them studying wherever they are if you can afford it fine if you can't why are you killing yourself and making that your object of life because all those things the birth death old age disease will still remain whether you study in america or you study in india how does it matter it may help you wherever you are if your family circumstances are there if your personal circumstances are there that you can afford to do that you may well do that but if you keep over endeavoring and extending now i have to provide for my children and my grandchildren and the next generation there is no end to it and that way you keep getting entangled in the material pool of misery and constantly recycling in it so that is not recommended so you have to draw a line somewhere this is it beyond this i'm not doing everybody has to manage on their own if you can't manage well tough luck this is just one life the main purpose of life is not to accumulate wealth because when you die you're going to leave it all behind everything is going to be left behind so it's not that it's useless what is not that that is my primary goal of life if your primary goal is survival yes if survival is your primary goal and you do what is needed then beyond that it becomes uh, mental concoction as to what does survival mean if i don't have a mercedes benz that means i don't survive i will die no if i don't have the latest iphone you know uh, i'm going to be devastated well buy the 400 rupee geo phone that is probably better than the iphone today i don't know that's what i hear uh, it might be better who knows time will tell but the point is you need something for a particular purpose for a fulfilling a particular purpose you fulfill that and just <coughs> move on there's no need to get into all the bells and whistles and fancy stuff uh, if you are already a millionaire you can afford it you are a rich person you can spend that money okay i have to make very nice wedding for my child i will have to borrow money and do that well that's a very bad position to be in where you think it's necessary to do that because of the biradri of the community of the society so then you are having other kinds of issues but there also you need to moderate there are people who spend their whole lives planning for their children's wedding and earning for that and at the end of the day they spend that money they go into debt and they have miserable lives there after the children are not bothered then what have you done it for some social idea so you have to understand this and these are hard decisions that you need to make at your end what i have to do what is money all about these are also all illusory situations that one creates for oneself in one's mind one should live a upright decent life as much as you can and all these other things will be taken care of automatically if you live as a uh, you know a life like that which is uh, you can say a gentlemanly life or a gentle person uh, considerate life considerate of others considerate of yourself not over stressing yourself managing within what you have and not any huge ambitions not looking what the other fellow is doing 
so I should also copy it or emulate it and or somebody tells you if you do this you will make lots lots of money well what will you do with lots of money when you are dying that's not going to save you you need some money yes but if that is your only objective of life then you are in trouble what are you using that money for is more important what you do with it is important okay anyone else anyone here strangely silent today why is that hmm? okay then we will conclude here today at the end of chapter 14 the three material modes of nature and next time we will either rediscuss this i think we can revisit this before proceeding to chapter 15 Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Okay thank you we'll see you next week You've been listening to Nalan Kainarula on gettingpositivekarmanow.com. Thank you.